ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another prediction show. As always, my name is Mike Larkin, and joining me by my side for the first time in about three years now, pre-COVID is the last time we did this, folks. My mommy, mommy, it is so good to be doing this with you again. We're going to be talking, I'm talking about Backlash this Saturday in Puerto Rico, main event by Bad Bunny and Damian Priest in a San Juan street fight. It's so good to have you back. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine. And how are you? I'm good. It's First, good to be back, it especially is. on a Cinco de Mayo. What a time to be doing the Puerto Rico show predictions on the Cinco de Mayo. It's the Calvron, Damien Priest. You Calvron. <laughs> Ugh. I will say this first and foremost, folks. The last time that my mom and I here did some predictions was January of 2020. That was when NXT UK had just started doing their takeovers. It was for NXT Blackpool 2, which was main evented by, at the time, Walter against Joe Coffey. Hey, man, who's now on NXT. Oh, Lord. For the NXT UK championship during Walter's reign. And I got to say, first and foremost, times have changed. COVID has happened. And now here we are. The year is 2023. A lot of stuff has been going on in professional wrestling. And it's a good time to be a professional wrestling fan. Enjoy everything from the variety that is pro wrestling. And I got to say, first and foremost, we got seven matches here to predict for Backlash 2023, hosted by Bad Bunny, San Juan, Puerto Rico. And now I got to put this to you because you brought this up to me. We were talking. And as we know, and I've said this many times on shows, the Ruthless Aggression Era is where I first started watching wrestling, and this ties into Backlash here. 2005's New Year's Revolution, so about 18 years ago, was the last time that we had a pay-per-view in San Juan, Puerto Rico for WWE. New Year's Revolution, taking it back to 05. Now, I'm pulling this up because she asked how I remember this stuff after all these years. And folks, I watch a lot of WWE Rivals. This is where this started because you and I were watching Randy Orton, The Undertaker on Rivals on A&E, and I was telling you about the story, and you go... How do you remember all this stuff? I'm like, well, this is when we started watching wrestling. And I pulled, and I'm going to pull up the card here because this was the card 15 years ago, folks, which I can't even believe now. Uh, the Now we're going to talk about New Year's Revolution here, which ties into how we're going to get into the Backlash card here. But here is the matches from the last time we saw a pay-per-view in San Juan, Puerto Rico for WWE. Now, I want to see if you remember these people, and I want to see if you could tell me who won. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, so the dark match on here was the Hurricane and Rosie, as I do my little superhero in training. Shit, God rest his soul. Against La Resistance, Sylvain Grenier and Robert Conway. Who do you think won? The Hurricane and Rosie. Yes. And do you re- obviously, do you remember La Resistance? Yes. Okay. Eugene they and William. had the dog, too, didn't That they? was Rene Dupree with Fifi, yes. Uh, Eugene and William Regal against Christian and Tyson Tomko for the World Tag Team Championships. Who do you think won? Uh, uh, William Regal. And Eugene, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. And do you remember Tyson Tomko? Mm-mm. Ball guy, Christian problem solver with the goatee? No? Mm-mm. Okay. Not too much. For those that don't remember Tyson Tomko, he was in TNA for a little bit. He teamed with AJ Styles. They were the tag champs. He actually teamed in New Japan, and he was the tag champ with Giant Bernard, who you may remember, and a lot of us wrestling fans remember as Albert, A-Train, oh, Sweet yeah. T, Shave Your Back, Mr. Shave Albert. Back. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the former hip-hop hippo with Scotty Too Hotty back in the day, and he was in TNA with Test. The whole nine. Uh, Trish and Lita for the WWE Women's Championship. Who do you think won? Trish. Yes. For those that don't remember that, that was when Lita got hurt and Trish won the title after they just had that main event match on Raw that everybody still talks to to this day. Uh, Shelton Benjamin and Maven for the Intercontinental Championship. Who do you think won? Yeah, it would be Shelton Benjamin. Yes. And for those that don't know, he beat Maven like three times in one show. Maven lost really quickly. And he kept saying it was thanks to the crowd because they were constantly booing. They hated Maven on the Uh show and Shelton was the champ. Now, do you remember Maven? No, <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> so for those that don't remember, Maven was the first ever Tough Enough winner. Tough Enough was where John Morrison came from, uh, The Miz, Daniel Pewter, Ryback, and so many others. Um, oh, Nidia. Him and Nivia won that, that year Tough Enough. Remember Skanky, as you used to call it? Yeah, Skanky. <laughs> oh, my God. With Jamie Noble, boy. <laughs> but, yes, that was Maven. He eliminated The Undertaker in the Royal Rumble. That's what he's well known for. And they're having probably one of the most beautiful drop kicks ever. All right. Muhammad Hassan and Jerry Lawler. This was Muhammad Hassan's debut for the WWE. Who do you think won? On paper, his paper you debut. Who do you think won? Muhammad Hassan or Jerry Lawler? Muhammad Hassan. Muhammad Hassan, yes. Who is, now, who is now a high school principal and they took him off oh, TV. <laughs> who took him off TV because, you know, of the London bombings at the time. Daniel Crimmins and I touched upon that on the latest edition of Unleashed. Uh, Unleashed, excuse me, Uncaged. Go back and watch that on my YouTube channel. Uh, Kane and Gene Snitsky. It's not my fault. 
miscarriage, landed on top of Lita. They killed the baby. Um, <laughs> and how how funny is that with Kane in the matchup, folks? Mayor Kane. Uh, I hate to bring politics into it, but it was worth it. Uh, Kane and Gene Snitsky. Who do you think won? Kane. Yeah, beating Snitsky. This was the this was the rematch because Snitsky, you know, the whole baby thing. The, what everybody talks about from that is, do you remember the big thing that happened from that feud? So he had like a like the babies that you would see in like a parenting class in school, like the like the the baby dolls. He kicked a baby doll into the and punted it right into the crowd, as to say like, "Hey, Lita, I got rid of your baby, and I'm going to kick this baby into the crowd." It was like one of those fake babies, the fake baby dolls. Yeah, it was a funny part of the storyline <laughs> if people remember. And the main event for the vacant World Heavyweight Championship with Shawn Michaels as the referee, Triple H, Randy Orton, Batista, Chris Jericho, Edge, and Chris Benoit. Who do you think won? Triple H. Yes. Now, he had just won it back, and I actually even forgot this. See, you talk about me for that me not forgetting stuff. I actually forgot this. So they did a match with Triple H, Benoit, and Edge. Uh-huh. And Benoit and Edge, there was like a submission and a double pin at the time. So they vacated the title for a month, and then Triple H won it back here. This was not one of her favorite Elimination Chamber <laughs> matches at SummerSlam 03, which, my God, 20 years now. I am the game boom when Shawn Michaels, Triple H was coming out of the pod, and Shawn Michaels, sweet chin music, Triple H right back into that pod. And you know, so yeah, he didn't even get to do anything. He didn't even get to do anything. Yeah. It was just, I am the game. <laughs> boom. So boom, he kicked it right <laughs> back into it. I just, I don't know, that struck me really funny. And a couple final things more before we even get into the show here. I got to even mention this to you. Today is, as we're speaking, folks, it is the nine year anniversary of the Shield. As one of one of your favorites, the Shield beat Evolution oh. at Extreme Rules, and then that would go into Payback, and then afterwards became the infamous. There's always a Plan B, and Seth Rollins. Nine years since Seth Rollins took out Roman with that infamous chair shot that's and him. took out Dean. Yep, oh. uh, that's what started all, folks. And I'll be honest with you, with everything that's going on with it, I'd love to see Roman and Seth do it one more time again. Well, I would. Well, we never got a well, we never got a clean finish. Remember at the Rumble because Seth uh, Roman returned the favor, just hit him right in the back with the chair. Yeah, that was it. And the other thing from this week, Backlash 2006, which at the time we hated, it is the anniversary, folks, of God is getting jiggy with it, everybody. Oh, Shawn God. Michaels and God against the McMahons, yeah. McMahonism, Holy Water, thus would be the name of Vincent Kennedy McMahon, the Holy Spirit Squad. No. Oh, my God. No, no, no. I know. Me either. So, all right, I want to see if you remember these people. Goldust and Rob Conway. Who do you think won on the heat match? Goldust and who? Rob Conway. Goldust. Yes. Carlito or Chris Masters? Carlito? Yes. Umaga with Armando Alejandro Estrada Escuchame. Everybody listen to me and his debut on pay-per-view. I used to drive you nuts with that. <laughs> it was, he did so well. Umaga. Umaga. Yes. That was his debut. He beat Ric Flair on pay-per-view. Uh, Trish and Mickey James for the Women's Championship. Who do you think oh, won? Trish. By DQ, but she did not win the title back. This was when, remember, Mickey James was nuts and she was obsessed yeah, with Trish? Was, yes. Tr- yes, that's right. Um, a singles match for the Intercontinental Championship and Money in the Bank contract. Rob Van Dam or Shelton Benjamin? Oh. Rob Van Dam? Yes. That was when he won the Intercontinental title, beating Shelton Benjamin. This was around the time. Remember Shelton Benjamin and his mama? Yes. yes. This is around that time. <laughs> uh, big Show against Kane? Mm. Big Show? No contest. Now, remember around this time, this was another one that was that was really nuts, folks, because this happened. Uh, See No Evil, the first of the WWE films, came oh, out. Yes, and and May 19th, he was obsessed. Mm-hmm. Don't talk about May 19th. And that led to, um, he was, they found out that May 19th was his parents died with the fire thing. The fire. And the fake cane, you remember who the fake cane was? Yeah. Festus. Luke Gallows. Oh, God. Early Festus. Before that. <laughs> uh, Mr. McMahon and Shane McMahon against Shawn Michaels and God. Who do you think won? Probably Shane and, and Vince. Vince. Yes, yeah, that was uh, the Holy Spirit Squad came in. Vince pinned Sean and the infamous call from JR. That's bullshit. <laughs> Did he really? Yes. And finally, John Cena, Triple H, and Edge for the triple triple threat match for the title. Who do you think won? John Cena. Yes. So that was what happened this week in wrestling. Do I remember? You do. Story? Not that bad. I also do remember at the time in 2005 when you actually looked at me like I was nuts. I don't know. This is also wrestling related. Do you remember what happened? So we were in FYE, folks, and I wanted to pick up Korn's See You on the Other Side album now because Twisted Transistor was a song off that album that I wanted to, uh, that I liked. And I also like, there was another song on there called Coming Undone. And I wanted to pick it up. We were at like FYE or something. And he wouldn't let me get it because 
I've never heard you listen to this music. And I'm like, well, you left the room. When you leave the room, I listen to other stuff besides what you and I <laughs> listen to. Because here's the thing. I don't play it for you because out of respect for you, I know you don't like corn. No, I, I know you don't like and all that good stuff. You don't like Freak on a Leash and all that no. stuff. So that's why I listen to it when you're out of the room. Out of respect for you because I know you went about that life. Absolutely. Kind hard. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get into Backlash 2023. And I'm, I'll am i be honest with you. I think this is a very good card. Are you looking forward to it? We have a lot of good stuff. I know who you're especially looking forward to. Miss Blutz, president of the Bloodline fan club over here. Okay. I know you're looking forward to all these. So let's start it off hot here, folks. Well, I'm not because I know what's going to happen. Oh, well, hold on. we'll get to that. Well, we'll start it off hot here because a lot of people had a little bit of outrage about this. Well, it was just randomly announced announced on SmackDown, but we got more backstory to it. Uh, Seth freaking Rollins against Omos. And now, so here's the thing here. MVP broke the deal, so Omos could be a free agent, get the big matches. He almost beat Brock Lesnar, but 1F5 took him out at WrestleMania. So we had Seth and Omos here now. And he's Seth has talked about stomping his head into the mat. Mm -hmm. But can he hit the curb stomp on that big Jalossus, the Nigerian giant that is Omos? Me personally, if it were me, because we're building Omos, if we want to give him a big victory, give it over Seth freaking Rollins. They want that new WWE championship that's now on Raw, as we saw. So it's going to be interesting. But I think the visual as well, like we talk about the visual with the F5 from Brock, I think the visual of him giving the curb stomp to Omos would be something. So I'm, I'm, it's a hard one for me, but I'm going to go with who I want to win, that being Seth freaking Rollins. Who are you going with? That's what I was going to go with, Seth freaking Rollins. All he's got to do is kick him in the knee, get, make him fall, and then curb stop him. All right. Well, that, that's your simple plan of it just going to, but there's a lot more to take out that Nigerian giant, man. I always said this about Omos. He goes from being in the Raw Underground segments during the pandemic with mm -hmm. Shane McMahon doing that MMA like fight or type fight of deal. Yeah, and then he teamed with AJ Styles. To, yeah. See, you, you talk about you not remembering stuff. You remember. And also the fact that him and Omos, him and AJ Styles were the tag champs. And now we're they're pushing Omos, man. But I got to say, first and foremost, going to be good stuff. Seth freaking Rollins. Let's go. We'll start with this one next. Uh, Austin Theory. I don't know if you know this or not, but A-Town Down. Yeah. A-Town Down against Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed for the WWE United States Championship in a triple threat match. Uh, Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed are in this because... Well, they're feuding, and they got beef with each other, and now Bobby Lashley also wants to reclaim that United States Championship from Austin Theory, and Theory's just a badass. He beat John Cena at WrestleMania, which we've talked about, and a lot of people have said it online. What is this? Uh, yeah. I don't think it sucked that bad, but it was what it needed to be. It was what it was, so to speak, that we see in a lot of professional wrestling, so... Yeah, and now A-Town Down is on Smack It Down. A-Town Down is on Smack It Down with uh, with everything going on there. And Gunther is now on Raw with Imperium. Uh, Theory, Lashley, and Reed. I'm going to say that Lashley and Reed are going to cancel each other out. I got to say A-Town Down retains, but I think something's going to happen where, like we mentioned, they take each other down. Theory will get that win. I, I can see him be, be, uh, pinning Lashley here, and then they have a feud again because Lashley is now on SmackDown. And the Bronson Reed, I believe, is still on Raw. I guess a draft, what have you. But still... I don't see Bronson Reed winning it too soon. Uh, Bobby Lashley, possibly, but I got to go A-Town down here. Austin Theory by Chicanery and Shenanigans. Who are you going with? I'm going to say him, too. Austin Theory. Why is that? Just because you think he's going to cheat and find a way to win? Mm-hmm. I got to say, first and foremost, he's... The other two are going to okay. kill each other. They're going to kill each other and cancel each other out? Yeah, and then he'll... All right. That's, that's fair. I mean... Yeah, that's that's I'm I'm I'll be honest with you, but this match I'm kind of very meh with it, yeah. but I understand it, so I'm gonna go with Austin Theory as well. Uh, Raw Women's Championship match, the Raw Women's Champion who's now on SmackDown, Bianca Belair, also taking on someone who also is on SmackDown, EO Sky. Now these two have come a long way since NXT. They both wrestled each other with NXT, both in the May Young Classics, if you will. Um, I've really enjoyed, like, just I've always enjoyed EO Shirai, EO Sky. Now it's it's very hard to call her EO Sky now because I'm sure EO Shirai. Uh, Bianca's always impressed. I mean, for me, this is what it should be. This is one of the um, sleeper matches. I think this one has a chance to steal the show. Um, they've been really showcasing that conflict with Bailey and Dakota Kai and damage control. You know what I'm saying? Not letting EO speak for herself, but then she might get a chime in too. I think we're going to see something more with like damage control getting involved, but it backfires. So I got to say Bianca continues her very lengthy reign as champion. And I got to say Bianca Belair hits that KOD on EO Sky. One, two, three. Uh, who are you going with, Bianca Belair or EO Sky? Well, yeah, 
I think Bianca Belair is going to win, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say Io Sky because I want her to win. I want her to win too. I mean, she's a former NXT Women's Champion. If you remember, she beat Charlotte for that championship in 2020. Uh, I've really enjoyed everything that Io Sky's done. I mean, I said her name right there. Io, Io Sky, Sky, yeah. I want. To I want to say Io Shirai too. Like I look at look at the girls and young veterans and Schism, the dyad there. I can't call them Jagger and you know whatever the other one is. I, I, Fowler or whatever. I think it's Fowler and Jagger. Their new names are with the schism. Like I just call them Zach Gibson. Take your shoes off. Zach Gibson. <laughs> and James yeah. Drake. I can't. I can't do it. You can't make me do it. But yeah, I'm gonna go be. Maybe called call Walter Gunther. Why you got a problem with that? Because it's like it's ridiculous. Why Gunther? Gunther. 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 Uh, and you're saying. and you're where you're also just drinking the haterade because uh, her and Ginny got married over <laughs> the weekend. <laughs> First of all. Ginny, the fashionista, was a great character in NXT UK. Great yeah, heel. The big nose. Yeah. He, he, the big schnozzola, if you will. You know what I'm saying? What are you making out like she's got Gonzo nose? What the hell's wrong with you? <laughs> the poor girl did it. nothing. You're drinking the haterade. Stop <laughs> hating. Start participating is what you should do. I'm here and I am participating. Start participating. Start twinkle, twinkle, baby. Twinkle, twinkle. Be cool. Twinkle, twinkle, you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yes. I right, Nonetheless, we digress. So where are yeah, we? Yeah, you did digress. I'm I'm sticking to the program. What do you mean you're sticking to the program? We're still talking about wrestling. Coincide. Hit something. Representation of your presentation. Hello. What the heck are you talking? about? What the heck are you talking about? about? I'm just talking. Recognize. I'm talking. Be talking. Be quiet. Like so <laughs> we're gonna go to the next match. Uh, yeah, please. Ow. So we're gonna see. You. I'm gonna hit just you slapping back. back, man. <laughs> Throw some D's on that bitch. So now we have this match. What are you pitching me for? It's my show. I'm a 31 year old man, damn it. You can't be pitching me like that on the show. Well, stop it. Stop what? Stop cursing. I'm a grown man. Well. Well. <laughs> well. So we're going to go to the next match. This is for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The underdog of Zalina Vega of the LWO, Latin, where Latino, uh, Latin, excuse me. Latin. <laughs> Yeah. The Latino World Order. I almost said Latina World Order because she's Latina. Uh, against Rhea Ripley for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The underdog, the woman who's from Puerto Rico. Her family came from Puerto Rico. They've always told the story of Zelina Vega's father, unfortunately, passing away from the 9-11 attacks, unfortunately. God rest his soul. Come a long way from Impact, teaming with Sarah Stock, a.k.a. Sarita, for the Knockouts Tag Team Championships. And as you remember, she started with Andrade. Uh-huh. From NXT, and she's made her way. Queen Zelina, former tag team, women's tag team champ with Carmella. Uh, for this one, I'm going to say this because you actually pointed this out. Rhea Ripley, we saw that glimmer of hope goes at the rib tide, and Zelina Vega drops her on her dome piece with that DDT. Ugly. It was ugly looking, but what a sell job, Rhea holding her head. And I got to say, another one that's very much a sleeper because I think even though she, again, much like Ray Ray, the underdog here, I think here's the thing. If you want a hope spot and you want to get something like really let the crowd roar, you have her win here. And then like we've talked about, let her win it back in the States. Uh -huh. That's what I think. But I don't think that's going to happen because Rhea Ripley is on fire right now. And now with Rhea Ripley on Raw still, there's so much stuff they can do. Now Ronda and Shayna are both on Raw. There's a possibility we can rekindle that rivalry with Rhea and Shayna when Rhea beat Shayna for the NXT Women's Championship. We've never seen Rhea and Ronda, which would be very interesting. So there's stuff that we could do now that they're all on Raw there. Um, I, I got to go Rhea here. I got to go Rhea. I think it's going to be really good, but they're not taking that championship off for just yet after that amazing match with Charlotte WrestleMania. Who are you going with? The upset for Zelina Vega to win it in Puerto Rico or Rhea Ripley? You're going to hit me up. I'm going to go with, uh, what's her name? Rhea Ripley. You're going to go Rhea? Yeah. You're going to go with the Nightmare? Uh-huh. I don't think she... You're going to go with Mommy? Yeah, I don't think Zelina is going to win it as much as I want her to. I gotta say, me too. And I, I mean, to uh, to make the crowd feel good and put well, me going. Well, look at what they fought. All right, hold on. You bring a great point here because Drew McIntyre, when he fought Roman at Wales, Clash at the Castle, he lost in front of his family. Yeah, no. Yeah, that See. damn that damn Solo Sokoa. I like Solo. <laughs> yeah, Solo Sokoa. Umaga Junior. And I don't hate that because I think he does a great Samoan spike like Umaga does. He speaks and yells in Samoan like Umaga used to do. Uh -huh. We saw it on SmackDown. He did well no. Too. He did that spin kick like Umaga on SmackDown when he was wrestling uh, no, when on Raw, excuse me, when he was wrestling Seth Rollins. Oh yeah. He did the spin kick like Umaga. I don't remember that. Well no, the the flying solo, I told you. That's yeah, your whole yeah, 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 yeah. Why you got hate in your heart, man? I'm not hating heart. Respect the lineage oh, and the white family. 
I can't talk. Hate in your heart. I got nothing in my heart. Hate in your heart. Nothing in my mouth. He's like, I can't uh, talk right. Well, stop being a mush mouth over here. Like friggin' Fat Albert. Hey, 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 you want me to take you down to the junkyard? <laughs> All right, so we're both going, Rhea. Let's move on here. So we're down to the three big matches here, and I think we're going to start off hot with this one here. Cody Rhodes, baby. The American Nightmare against Brock Lesnar. This He wants to finish the story. He's making him go through obstacles. Um, Man, we saw the fight when the brawl with um, them on Raw. Brock not, not really getting touched as much. On the first go around, but this go around, P- Cody potatoed him. Got a little cut on the side of his nose. Did Brock Lesnar this week? Um, I think Brock can take a loss here, and I think we're going to continue with the story of Cody going through all the hoops to get back to that. I mean, we got Money in the Bank coming up. My prediction, I'm going to say right now here. I told you I could see Cody winning that Money in the Bank, or if he's not in this tournament, to he'll win the WWE World Championship. But I think the chase is there, and especially if Cody wins, it doesn't win Money in the Bank. I think that person who will win it, and I love to see him win it is L. A night. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> to see that happen. Uh, Cody and Brock, I'm going to go with who I want to win. I think we're going to see a reversal out the F5 into a crossroads. I, I, I got to go with Cody. Who I swear go? to God, you just talk a mile a minute. All it is is who do you think? I think it's Why Cody. do you got a problem with how we're addressing this? I think it's Cody. I like to do that. It's it's for the people. It's informative. Well, who are you going with, Cody or Brock? Cody. All right. Cool. I think we're both in agreement on that. Even though I know you can't look at Brock the same now because he looks like the Undertaker with that black coat and that black hat. What the hell are you doing, Mister Brock Lesnar? Oh my goodness! I don't care about the way he looks. That's not the point. But the, I just think Cody's going to win this time. That's what I said. No, you said Cody. I don't know. I'm wondering if maybe Brock. Or do you win. think Brock's going to get the dub in Puerto Rico? I don't know. I don't. What does what does Puerto Rico like? Brock or Cody? Here? Well, I'm going to say Cody because Cody has been killing and hitting all cylinders since he's coming back from the injury. The, the people were upset that he lost at WrestleMania. They threw a rubber chicken, a rubber chicken <laughs> in the ring. There's a rubber chicken in the ring. It's like Cody. They have that that, that visual. This distraught. You know, he lost. Didn't he say something about that too? Yeah, he was in the promo. He's like, and I was supposed to be my knight. There I am sitting, and there's a rubber chicken next to me. And I'm like, <laughs> he brought up the rubber chicken. <laughs> oh my god. Here's the thing. You're supposed to feel bad for him in the visual, but then here's I can't take it serious because here's a who, who throws a rubber chicken. I feel like Austin Powers. Who throws a shoe? <laughs> Honestly, who throws a rubber chicken in the ring? I mean, well, we could be like Mexico and AAA with what they would throw at the ring. You don't want to do that. What was that? They would throw piss in the ring. They would throw piss in the ring. How did they do that? No, they pee in a cup and throw the piss. Oh, good. Mexico, baby. AAA. AAA. -ah. My goodness. What? (laughs) If if a drunk Jeff Jarrett can throw tortillas into the crowd, (laughs) some people might might, might throw throw piss on them. No, I hope not. But I I was going to say, I guess Cody. Again. Jeff Jarrett throwing tortillas is an image that has turned into a GIF, folks. Jeff Jarrett throwing tortillas into the crowd at the at the Mexican at the Hispanic Mexican folks in Mexico. Triple A, <laughs> Galavision, baby. Not good. <laughs> no, I used to actually watch that. I told you, Galavision. Remember we used to have Galavision. It was like channel seventy something, and like there was a block on Saturday and Sunday of four hours of Triple A. I tried yeah. to watch it once, and it's long. <laughs> it's long. I know. Uh, but no, I gotta gotta go, Cody Rhodes, and now. We'll bring to the mashup that, let's be honest here, folks. <laughs> let's be honest here, folks. Bow in the background here. <laughs> let's be honest with ourselves here. This is the match you're looking forward to. Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn against the Bloodline. Solo Sokoa, Jay Uso, and Jimmy Uso. Um, I'm going to put it to you like this. Riddle stopped Solo from coming out and helping uh, them, the Usos, win the tag titles back from Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, Riddle wants that revenge and it's getting taken out by Solo. Uh, Sammy still feels sorry for Jay. He wants to see Jay get out of the bloodline there, worrying about what Roman Reigns is going to do to them now. You could tell he's becoming impatient. You saw Solo shake his head after they lost the tag team title match. Now there's a lot of planted seeds here. Is Solo going to turn on his brothers, the Usos, and say, hey, you know what? You're, this is by orders of the tribal chief, Samoan Spike to both of you, <laughs> and just get rid of the Usos permanently from the bloodline, and that leads to Jay and Roman maybe over the summer, that three-year mark, and maybe Jay being the person to finally beat Roman Reigns after three years. Mm-hmm. Ah, it's it's really going to be tough here, but in, for this particular one, since there's been such, you know, the bloodline decisiveness and the, the dividing of here of the bloodline, 
Man, I got to say Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn because Bloodline's also been coming out on top a lot, especially with Solo. But I think it's time that Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn maybe get their revenge on the Bloodline. I think it go either way. I think it can go either way. Matt Riddle needs to get revenge. It's good, though. It's good. Tell the story. I hear about Okay, well, who do you want to see? I want to see the Bloodline. I got, I'm going to reverse... Flip it in reverse. I'm going to my thang down, rip it in reverse it. I feel like Missy Elliott. I'm about to work it. I got to go Matt Riddle, Kevin Owens, and Sami Zayn. I'm going to go baby face. You're going to go heels. I, you know you think it's one of the best storylines ever. The I, only thing this woman cares about is the bloodline. I That's the only story you care about in WWE. I, don't, I didn't say I was picking them. I don't think they're going to win. That's why I don't want to watch this. Well, you get angry over this stuff. You see, I you do. talk about me. You get angry over the bloodline. Every All good things must come to an end. Well, it was good. They had to go mess this all up. They're not. The tribal chief. And Roman Reigns, here's the thing. People complain that Roman Reigns is on every show. He doesn't have to be. No, he doesn't. He doesn't have to be. I think no, for what that man's been doing for three years. Some rest. Okay, first and foremost, the fact that the fact that Paul Heyman gets friggin' is jeered on friggin' Raw while Seth Rollins come out and he's supposed to be on the phone with the tribal chief. <laughs> I can't hear my tribal chief. <laughs> you are too loud. <laughs> <I know. laughs> it's so good. Oh, but yeah, I, we differ on that, but that's where I'm going. And this is what I think will be in the main event. I said I'm going to pick Matt Riddle and them, but I don't want them to win. Why you got hate in your heart, man, I for the bro? Because I don't. What's wrong with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn? They needed to win the tie times. Don't think so. I think the blood lodge should still have it. Well, when are you going to so, so. you gonna piss off everybody? Because here's the problem, and I agree with you, but here's the problem with today's fan base. They don't like having long reigns like back in the 80s. And this is why one of my good friends talking to me about this, who's in the business, she said, like, these kids nowadays – would not survive in the 80s with long title reigns like Bruno San Martino, who, of well, course, you know. Not in the 80s, well, no, that was he was in the 80s too, late 70s, early 80s. Yeah. And then Bob Backlund, of course, mm-hmm. and Hulk Hogan and all these reigns. You know what I'm saying? And then they said if Roman passes, like, and if he's into 2024, he'll pass Hulk Hogan's reign of 1,000 whatever days. So they may want to have him beat Hulk Hogan. Who knows? But there's a lot of talents that have had lengthy reigns. The Honky Tonk Man, for God's sake, was the Intercontinental Champion for about two oh, years. Think they're going to have Roman go to 20. They could years. if they wanted to and piss even more people off. But the man's a draw. You can't deny it. You know what I'm saying? The man's gone through leukemia and beat that again. The man friggin' had a hernia while he was he there. He's battled through a lot. Off. Yeah. Like, I mean, people say what they will about Roman Reigns, but he's one of the reasons why there are butts in the seats because he's a hot commodity. This is the best run that he's ever had. Yeah, yeah it really has. Well, he needed to turn heel, him. but he needed to turn heel. The baby face thing of the big dog was getting stale. Well, it doesn't matter. I still like him. I know, me too. Makes me difference. too. He could be a heel. He could be and a also baby. the fact that his last pinfall victory was against Baron Corbin is still funny. Between her also. I don't I know, but his last loss Roman was the, I, the I fucking tribal chief. Right. It's like the fucking Rainmaker in Okada. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> exactly. Oh, who is not the champion anymore over in Japan? That's Sonata. That's Sonata one. What is he? Was he listening to John? Well, Sonata? Sonata listening to John Sakata. Yep, absolutely. I know the names. <laughs> and folks, and folks, we're not bragging on New Japan, but a lot of the names sound similar: Sonata, Okada, and Naito, Shibata, Katsuri Shibata. Oh, that was still one of the worst images I've ever seen of his head doinking oh, with Okada, and he got the subdural hematoma, and the man walked to the back, passed out right to the hospital. I know that was something. He can't keep that doing was that. A heck of a man. Well, neither can Okada. Oh, God. good lord. Well, they might. They also said Kota Bushi. Oh, there's another one, Abushi, who was the champ, mm-hmm. might be coming to, might be coming to AEW, and him and Kenny Omega can reform the Golden Lovers, not to be confused with the Golden Showers, but the Golden Lovers. <laughs> so. But no, they were a good team. If you saw them in Japan, they were like the Beatles because they got over so much with the crowd chant. But yeah, we'll see. Main event time, folks. That uh, wasn't the main event? No, we got one more. Bad Bunny and Damian Priest at the Cabron and a San Juan street fight. You're going to see the Judgment Day get involved. You're going to see the Latino World Order get involved. This is going to be buck, buck, buck wild. Buck, buck, buck wild. Everybody's going to get involved. You say so. Okay. I mean, Damian Priest and Bad Bunny, they teamed at WrestleMania. We saw him many moons ago against Miz and Morrison, and that Canadian destroyer that he did on John Morrison was sweet. He looked good. Um, I got to say, in his home country of Puerto Rico, as we're recording this, tomorrow is the press conference at noon, mm-hmm. and then we get to SmackDown in Puerto Rico, which Bad Bunny will be live on. I got to give it to the BB, B squared. Bad Bunny's going to get his revenge on Damian Priest, but it's going to be buck, buck wild. I'm looking forward to it. Who are you going with, Bad Bunny or the Punisher of the Judgment Day, Damian Priest? Bad Bunny. You got to go Bad Bunny? Mm-hmm. Get that money? Mm-hmm. All right. So 
I'm going to say this right now. That is the card, seven matches. And if they announce one more, well, all well, because I don't think we need any more. I think what we have here is stacked and packed to the nines. And that, folks, is Backlash 2023. This Saturday, May 6th in San Juan, Puerto Rico. at the Stacked and packed. At the Coliseo de Puerto Rico. The Puerto Rican Coliseum, the Coliseo de Puerto Rico. I mean, uh, they've had better cards. Than I could it's a good them. card, man. I, I'm, I mean, it's okay, but geez. I'm enjoying it. I think it's been great I from what we have right now. Well, I think there's a lot of matches that are going to be bangers here. There's going to be a lot of bangers on this card, much like WrestleMania. Like I've said, you just say good. There's going to be a lot of good matches. A lot of bangers, man. Bangers, there's a lot of bangers. That's the, this, that's this, the phrase. It's the bangers. 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 It's another kind of bangers. Right. Bang bros. And bang bros. Mm-hmm. bang bros, bang bros, bang bros, bang bros, bang bros. <laughs> no, no, no. I think you're making me say something bad again. Why would I make you say something bad? I would never do. Folks say things that I don't know what you're talking about. Okay, well, first of all, when we started doing these predictions many moons ago, mm-hmm. you hated the fact that I said the drizzling shits, that the match was the drizzling shits, because you didn't know what the hell it meant. And then I explained to you that it means it sucked. And you looked at me funny, but like, what do you mean the drizzling shits? The shit, the bed thing. Oh, the shit, the bed thing, too. That's what you said. It happens. happens. It's a common phrase. You're learning. I'm start pa- a- start participating, Stop. I am participating. Stop participating. Don't tell me that again. Just because it rhymes, you think you're so cool. Ow. You think you're so cool, which you fro? We don't say tap that. Tap what? That's from the 40-year-old version. Seth, you think you're so cool with your Jufro? We don't say tap that. <laughs> I've never heard that. Ah, 40-year-old version, folks. One of the jams. Anyway, folks, what has been a jam is getting to do this with you after three long years. Mm-hmm. Doing the damn thing. And I don't know I don't know if we're going to do another one of these. We might. I mean, the next pay-per-view that is coming up. I don't up, know if you'll want me back because I got a, I'm, my mouth has not been too good tonight. Yeah, that's okay. And I'm, I've been a, I'm a little tired. That's all right. Honest. Happens. You know what I'm saying? We put out the content for the people. But you asked me and here I am. So. I know. That's why I love you. And besides, this is fun. I always love doing these with you. No, thank you. Of course. I, 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 I sort of like doing it with you. Thanks a lot. Get, I appreciate it. If I can get a word you in. You got a word in twice. The problem is I ask you to talk about it and then you just like... Eh, eh, eh. Well, that's it. I'm I'm to the point. I that's it. Everybody's to the point, man. You got to bring it up. You know what I'm saying? Bring it along, brother. I did bring it along, I brother. It along. What? I told you. You want to talk about the bloodline tomorrow? I'll talk to you. What? I'll, I'll talk to you. What? Let me talk. Let me to talk you. to you. <laughs> what? What? Don't start that with me. What? <laughs> that will conclude Backlash 2023 predictions. Um. I think the next pay-per-view, I'm trying to think if we want to do another one. Well, we'll do it. We'll probably be back. We might do this sporadically, depending on how we're feeling. I think the next pay-per-view after this is where we're going to go towards AEW. That's double or nothing, which is the... Wow! You're just going to automatically dismiss that. New. New. That's fine. Which is main event by MJF, Sammy Guevara, Darby Allen, and and, uh, Jungle Boy Jack Perry. The four pillars. We'll see how it goes. But I mean, yeah. We got AEW. We got more WWE. Money in the no, it's gonna be in the UK. AEW is another WWE. Wow, no, I another WWE pay per view. No, that's horrible. It's the truth. It's all WWE people. I know, I feel you, but yeah, it's gonna be good. Check out everything pro wrestling and support indie wrestling and pro wrestling as a whole. And uh, if you guys want to follow me, because we're almost to 500 subscribers here on this channel, please keep on subscribing, like, and doing what you do. I appreciate it. Check out Mike Larkin 92. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out soundcloud.com slash mclarkin92. StephenMikeShow.com. Check out my work over on the Capital Championship Wrestling YouTube channel, where I host Progression and Succession, Progression of Women in Professional Wrestling, and their succession along the way, and some recap shows. Badass. Follow them. Check out my work with LFC, Lingerie Fighting Championships, Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the three key elements that make women the work of art that they are. Shut up, Bo. And LFCFights.com and all the LFC links. Check it out. The links will be in the description. And of course, check out Steve and I doing our thing with the Steve and Mike show and everything from the Stevie Nicks Hockey Experience, the Stevie Nicks Experience. And hey, I got the Pop Culture Show came back not too long ago. I did my review of 24 years of Backstreet Boys. I want it that way because it's fucking awesome. And I'm going to tell you about it. Like, Bo, Bo I'll tell you about it even more. 
Let me talk to you. He's telling you he wants out. <laughs> so links will be in the description. Now, do you want to say any final words to the people after three years that we've been doing this? Because you're not really on social media. So no, we're not going to promote no, that. No social media for me. You're I not on the social. Go. I would always ask. I would always ask to promote your social media. But you kind of, you checked out on I social media. Mm -hmm. You know whose fault that is? Right. It's like goddamn Elon Musk's fault, folks. No, well, that's part of it, too. Mm -hmm. Eight bucks for a blue check. Go fuck yourself. How about that? <laughs> Mikey. I'm saying it. Go. I'm saying it. Fuck to the left, fuck to the right, spin around, go fuck yourself tonight. He so, took away Jimmy Kimmel's check. He did. Yeah. He's taking away checks, man. Chickity, check yourself before you wreck yourself, is what he's saying. Say. So <laughs> mom's Kimmel. not so mom's not on social media, but no. do you have any final words to the people? No, thanks for listening. Other than that, I'm gonna say good night and until we see each other and talk again. Thank you. Yeah. So for my mom, for myself. This concludes another Backlash 2023 prediction show. Another prediction show. Been a long ass three years. And now she's going to laugh again because ever after I turn off this recording, it'll say recording has stopped. And she'll laugh at the women because folks who know, know, know who knows who knows Zoom, for people who do Zoom, you know what I'm talking about. But also the fact is, I forgot to mention this. I've said this on my pop culture shows when we talk about CDs. This is going to be audio format. We were going to do video, but no, this one over here, it steals her soul. As she said for many years, for my, my entire 31 years of existence on this planet. <laughs> Steals your soul. Steals your soul. So you get the audio form here, and I'm going to put some nice images in here and some nice editing for each and every one of you. We'll talk to you next time, and we might be back. We'll see. We'll uh, we'll see how we're, uh, we'll see where the wind blows. Doesn't really matter to me. Little Bohemian Rhapsody. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. And good night.